What's up, what's up? What's up, YouTube family? All right, YouTube, we have here today, clean your room. <laughs> Powerful advice from Jordan Peterson. Now, I'm not sure about you. See, when I grew up, my mom had four girls. So we would always have to share our room. And we always had clothes, stuff everywhere. And we weren't the richest, you know, people on the block. So, of course, um, the me. closets were smaller. Or you had to share a dress with your sister. But you still wanted to make sure that you cleaned your room. Yeah. Um, you would keep your clothes in baskets. But we would still try to make sure that when you, well, I guess for me anyway, I would want to try to make sure that when I did my clothes away in a basket, I would at least try to have them folded. So you had a lot of baskets everywhere? No, no, no. I'm just saying like we had dressers and okay, stuff because it was four girls and stuff. Right. So you just kind of had to make, you know, room for what you had, yeah. had because. You had a lot of clothes. Yeah, you know? we just had a lot of clothes. Okay. And then the closets weren't that big. And then we used to go share all three y'all sharing one closet, right? Yeah, well, okay, or two right. rooms. Okay. So you had to kind of, you know, really, 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 you know, plan out the space. But now as an adult, Man, I get happy when I clean my room. I feel like a plea piece when I go in there. My room is clean. Um, mm -hmm. On the 4th of July, we had people over, so I had just did some laundry. So my husband here, with his wonderful self, guess what he did? He cleaned the room. He And then I went in the closet, and that's where everything was. Yeah. But that is okay. The room was clean. <laughs> The clothes was waiting on me when I got done. Oh, yeah. But the room was clean. He cleaned the dresser up. And I went in the room. I was like, oh, my God, it's so clean in here. And then I turned the corner and went into the restroom. The and then looked in the closet. Hey, they were right there. The yeah. But the room was clean. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, it looks so fancy in here. This my room. But it, did, it does give you a piece. Like, wow, that's one of the yeah. things I have to do. But what we have learned to really do is clean our room together. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure what if Jordan Peterson going to uh, speak about how just cleaning your room just makes you feel after you have done It's like an accomplishment. It's like mm. a simple accomplishment that you have just met. It's like, man, I can, I can, I can do anything after I clean my room. Yeah. Makes you know? sense. Okay. So it's a, it gives a piece. Yep. So Jordan Peterson is going to give us some powerful life advice. About cleaning your room. Ready. You ready? Oh, and I forgot to do the screen record because I'm running my mouth. I'm sorry. So you record it? <laughs> no, I'm gonna match the break. Okay. I did right. it. <laughs> Word to the wise. So imagine you're dealing with someone who's hoarding. Now, people who are hoarding are often older or neurologically damaged or they have obsessive compulsive disorder. But then you walk into their house and there's like 10,000 things in their house. There's maybe a hundred boxes and you open up a box and in the box there's some pens and some old passports and some checks and their collection of silver dollars and some hypodermic needles and some dust and you know a dead mouse and there's boxes and boxes and boxes like that in the house. It's absolute chaos in there. Absolute chaos, not order, chaos. And then you think, is that their house or is that their being? Is that mm, their mind? Yes. And the answer is, there's no difference. Wow. There's no difference. So, you know, I could say, well, if you want to organize your psyche, you could start by organizing your room. If that would be easier, because maybe you're a more concrete person and you need something concrete to do. So you go clean up under your bed and you make your bed and you organize the papers on your desk and you think, well, just exactly what are you organizing? Are you organizing the objective world or are you organizing your field of being, like your field of total experience? And Jung believed that, and I think there's a Buddhist doctrine that's sort of nested in there, that at the highest level of psychological integration, there's no difference between you and what you experience. Now you think, well, I can't control everything I experience, but that's no objection because you can't control yourself anyway. So the mere fact that you can't extend control over everything you experience is no argument against the idea that you should still treat that as an extension of yourself. Well, let's say you have a long-standing feud with your brother. Well, is that a psychological problem? Is that him? Is it a problem in the objective world? Or is, is it a problem in your field of being? And it's very useful to think that way because you might ask, well, what could you do to improve yourself? Well, let's step one step backwards. The first question might be, why should you even bother improving yourself? 
And I think the answer to that is something like, so you don't suffer any more stupidly than you have to. And maybe so others don't have to either. It's something like that. You know, like there's a real injunction at the bottom of it. It's not some casual self-help doctrine. It's that if you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it. And in a big way, and so will the people around you. And you could say, well, I don't care about that, but that's actually not true. You actually do care about that. Yeah. Because if you're in pain, you will care about it. And so you do care about it, even if it's just that negative way. It's very rare that you can find someone who's in excruciating pain who would ever say, well, it would be no better if I was out of this. Sort of pain is one of those things that brings the idea that it would be better if it didn't exist along with it. It's incontrovertible. So you get your act together so that there isn't any more stupid pain around you than necessary. Well, so then the question might be, well, how would you go about getting your act together? And the answer to that is, and this is a phenomenological idea too. It's something like, look around for something that bothers you and see if you can fix it. You can do this in a room. It's quite fun to do it just when you're sitting in a room, like a room, maybe your bedroom. You can sit there and just sort of meditate on it and think, okay, if I wanted to spend 10 minutes making this room better, what would I have to do? And you have to ask yourself that, right? It's not a command. It's like a genuine question. And things will pop out in the room that you know you like... There's a stack of papers over there that's kind of bugging you, and you know that maybe a little order there would be a good and thing. And, you know, you haven't, there's some <laughs> rubbish behind your computer monitor that you haven't attended to for like six months, and the room would be slightly better if it was a little less dusty and the cables weren't all tangled up the same way. And if you allow yourself just to consider the expanse in which you exist at that moment, there'll be all sorts of things that'll pop out in it that you could just fix. My wife and I decided to go get our first home. We noticed how easy the process was because they saw my And, you know, I might say, well, if you were coming to see me for psychotherapy, the easiest thing for us to do first would just be to get you to organize your room. You think, well, is that psychotherapy? And the answer is, well, it depends on how you conceive the limits of your being. And I would say, start where you can start. You know, if something announces itself to you, which is a strange way of thinking about it, as in need of repair, that you could repair, then, hey, fix it. You fix a hundred things like that, your life will be a lot different. Now, I often tell people, too, fix the things you repeat every day, because people tend to think of those as trivial, right? You get up, you brush your teeth, you have your breakfast, you know, you have your routines that you go through every day. Well, those probably constitute 50% of your life. And people think, well, they're mundane, I don't need to pay attention to them. It's like, no, no, that's exactly wrong. The things you do every day, those are the most important things you do. Hands down. All you have to do is do the arithmetic. Mm. You figure it out right away. So, a hundred adjustments to your broader domain of being, and there's a lot less rubbish around and a lot fewer traps for you to step into. And so, once you've got your mind and your emotions together, and once you're acting that out, then you can extend what you're willing to consider yourself and start fixing up the things that are part of your broader extent. It's a very interesting thing to do. I like the idea of the room because you can do that at the drop of a hat. You know, you go back to where you live and sit down and think, okay, I'm gonna make this place better for half an hour. What should I do? And you have to ask and things will just pop up like mad. And it's partly because your mind is a very strange thing. As soon as you give it a name, a genuine aim, it'll reconfigure the world in keeping with that aim. That's actually how you see to begin with. And so if you set it a task, especially, you have to be genuine about it, which is why you have to bring your thoughts and emotions together, and then you have to get them in your body so you're acting consistently. You have to be genuine about the aim, but once you aim, the world will reconfigure itself around that aim, which is very strange. And it's technically true. You know, the best example of that, you have all seen this video where you watch the basketballs being tossed back and forth between members of the white team versus the black team. And while you're doing that, a gorilla walks up into the middle of the video and you don't see it. It's like, you know, if you thought about that experiment for about five years, that would be about the right amount of time to spend thinking about it. Because what it shows you is that you see what you aim at. And that mm. 
man if you can get one well, thing through your head the as a consequence of even being in university that would be a good one you see what you aim at <laughs> and so because one inference you might draw from that is be careful what you aim at mm. right what you aim at determines the way the world manifests itself to you and so if the world is manifesting itself in a very negative way one thing to ask is are you aiming at the right thing now you know i'm not trying to reduce everybody's problems to an improper aim people get cut off at the knees for all sorts of reasons you know they get sick they have accidents there's a random element to being that's for sure and so you don't want to take anything even that particular phrase too far you want to bind it with the fact that random things do happen to people but it's still a great thing to ask Clean your room. What's your take on Be that? Be careful what you aim for. Okay. I mean, that's... You have to have a goal. Yeah. yeah. But you have to start somewhere. You have to be willing to really start somewhere. Like I mentioned earlier, like when you clean the room, I know for me, it's like, okay, oh my gosh, uh, the dresser. Let's, mm. let's start there. Yeah. Let's start with the dresser. And then once we start, once we aim on that, okay, and focus on that part and let's put those things where they go i mean you know sometimes um am sorry to cut you off um but sometimes you you when you start cleaning up you'll start somewhere but you end up say she started in the kitchen then she end up in the uh, bathroom i'm like hey wait whoa why you start in the bathroom you didn't finish the kitchen yet yeah, and a lot of times um yeah, um <laughs> we get overwhelmed because there's so much to do and yeah. if you don't start with one thing um you'll never finish you know something yeah and um, I was overwhelmed by having so many, uh, so many trucks that was down because the guys that drove a truck took my trucks up. So I had two trucks sitting that need to be worked on. I had two cars in the storage that I was working on, and I had my own the other truck I was actually driving. And then I was working on things at the house. So I'm sitting here scratched out trying to figure out how I'm gonna do this. Then I ended up buying a boat I had to work on. So I had all these projects that um I had to work on. You didn't on have with. a name. And I said, man, I, I I got I got to do something, man. If I'm not driving the two trucks and they, they're not working right, I need to go and sell them. And so I got rid of the, the two trucks and kept one truck and started working on that truck and, and making that truck look, you know, where you put that put that truck in, in a perspective where they need to be at for in good working condition. And then um I started working on other things and I just took one step at a time because it can overwhelm you, man. Your mind will just mm -hmm. explode, man. I heard a, uh, a joke, uh, I think it was um, Joe Osteen said, he said um, it was a man on a um, bridge that was um, about to jump off the bridge so a man stopped. And he said, hey, man, you know, come, don't do it, man. T tell, tell, me, tell me your problems, man. We, we, we can sit down. We can talk about this thing. So the man said, okay. He told the man his problem. Both of them jumped off the bridge. So the man had so much <laughs> going on in his mind that he offloaded to this guy. It was so much that both of them jumped off the bridge. The other guy jumped on the bridge with him. Let's go, man. You just It's an overload. So you don't want to get an overload yeah. where, you know, it's just so much going on. Mm -hmm. And it can happen. It can happen. I don't care how smart you are, man. You got to give yourself a break. Um, my wife, uncle, he drove trucks and he, she still drives trucks, but um, he's a drive so much, man. California, man. And just kept going, kept going, kept going. So one day he was in the shower and he passed out because his body said, hey, we're going to, you're going to rest. This is it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to give your mind some rest. Yeah. So don't take on so many projects. Don't take, yeah. yeah. Don't take on so much. Mm -hmm. And I think with the pandemic, um, and TikTok got all big and everything. And this one lady, she did put out this sheet about how she cleans up and she's trying to break, try to, tries to break up her cleaning schedule, like 15 minutes at mm -hmm. a time when she sets a timer. And I know for me, I was like, I never think about that. Oh, I, I, you know, I, never, I never thought about when that. When I go in the store, but yeah, you, yeah, I no, you don't. No, on, no, yes, no, I do. I put he a time do on. I do. But what I, I had to, on, what, what I, but what I had to realize with that is, okay, like he told, like he, mm -hmm. you know, he told on me about, you know, I saw I clean up one thing, clean up something else, but that's just mm. yeah. having a focus on one thing. I've been working on that myself. I've been working on that. Okay, like if I know I'm going to the room, I'm going to clean the dresser. I'm going to walk in the closet and start cleaning the closet because I'll do that. And then left that guy takes us to the bathroom. Then I start cleaning the bathroom. I'm like, you know what? 
Shan, really? Calm your little self down, girl. Seeing things in the bathroom, you need to clean up. You end up in the bathroom. Like, what I was doing before I got in the bathroom? I was in the kitchen. And you go to the kitchen. So the whole thing just to stop. And you walk in the living room, pick up something. They're going out. You back in the living room floor. So. So. I came in this living room. So. I was in the bathroom. I can say, I am very proud of myself. I haven't gotten a lot better with that. I haven't been doing it as much. I think because I have been taking time and just really, okay, now, no, Shan, you're going to focus on that. You're going to focus on that. And, and the thing is, is that you can get so congested with so much stuff going on in your mind, work, um, the house, the kids, to you get to a point where you neglect the marriage. And what I mean by that is, is that you don't, you stop doing date nights. You start complimenting each other, and you start just going on with going life. Going on and on and on and, and, and on. And mm -hmm. you want to um, make sure that you're, 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 you're kind of setting little goals and, like I said, timers. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Now, I can't forget about date night. I need to, I, I, mm -hmm. I still have a marriage. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes we do get comfortable and say, hey, I'm married already. Ain't good. I'm breaking in the money. Nope. That's all that matters, man. Still want to so, have a date. Still want to have a date. This, cleaning your room can be, it's a metaphor, right? Yeah. So it's pretty much something and where actual something yeah, so pretty around. much that you need to, you know, start doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. have a have a focus. That. Have a focus. Like I know, um, next week, oh my God. You guys are not gonna believe this. What's yes, next week? What? This man right here. He's taking a day off. And we're gonna go on a little vacation. Him and I. We have not been anywhere. Just together, we'll always take the kids with us and their adults. Mm, I know, right? So we'll take them with us, but this is going to be a time for us to just go out and just spend some time together. It's going to be like a long weekend date, you know? So even even with us, we still had to kind of, okay, we hadn't, I think you brought up too, about how we hadn't went out of town in a long time. And like I said, we've been trying to do more stuff around the house together. Mm. I am not, more, I'm not cutting the grass though, so... Pray, pray for me on that. I, I can't do that. But as far as like things in the house, we'll do together. So we have been spending more time doing that. But for me, he'll be like, okay, um, come just come have a seat. And here I am moving around, moving around, mm -hmm. moving around. After I know I have cleaned up already after the grandbaby son left, I'm like, look, I, I got to put this way. Let me go do this right here. That, this, that, and that. No, no. All he asked me to do was just come have a seat. Mm -hmm. And, I, and every now and then I wash the dishes, you know. And then she said, "Boy, you look sexy washing the dishes." I'm like, "Do I look sexy?" I, I get this, and just be we rub that dish. She be, "Ooh, boy, I be like, ooh, girl, you just don't know." Shh, the soap on it, be what? The same dish and just put it in the thing, in, in the sink, and I just wash one dish and I'm done. Don't let him get the broom. And if I grab the broom, oh my God, what? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, but seriously, like I told him that. And I was like, but all he but all he asked me to do is just sit and just spend up just and then of course spending that time does help me to like, okay, you know what? That stuff can wait. I did all I, I know I, I did what I said I was gonna do. So why am I still trying to do stuff again? Yeah, she you know she'll juggle a lot of stuff and, and not only juggle the stuff around the house, the kids, the, her husband, but she has, she's like Google. So the teachers will call her and <laughs> ask for information, and then it's like overload. I'm like, man, you really you know you got to have a a, sh a cut off with certain things with people, man. You know, yeah. it's okay to help people like a but database. You got to cut off somewhere because <laughs> you you know they they you know people are poor from you and. And pulling. I'm always willing to give information, so of course I have to cut that off too because as soon as the phone rings or the text messages come through, somebody's, Shan, uh, how did you do, Shan? How did you, you know, so I'm like, all the information, and it just actually just comes out. Like, I don't know where all the information comes from, but it just assumed that I know, and mm -hmm. it actually comes out. Like, how they knew I knew that? They've been stalking me. They don't ask me that. They be, hey, uh, can I borrow a What's Shane? Or, uh, yeah. Buy $30 money. Can I buy a third dollars But dollars? You got just, 40 on you? I know you got 40 But no, but but but, but seriously, just having. Well, I get this pitching with cash. I'm like, what's what's cash, 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 cash But seriously, just having. It's never sending me money. It's always just 
pulley from me. I'm like, man, you, you just pull, just pull. Sorry, boo. I had to actually get a couple of two cups, <laughs> and I had to tell my niece this. I said, this is this this is this is me. The 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 cup full of water. This is you empty, a empty cup. And I started pouring my water into her cup. I said, if you continue to take from me, uh, what happens to my water? It's all gone. I said, we have to give and take. Give, it should be pouring into one another, not always taking from somebody. Yeah. And that's a lot of times people, they're, no, they're, they're takers. They'll, they'll, they'll take, take what you're aiming on and make it about them. Or, mm -hmm. or you just lose your aim completely. So what is it? It's about staying focused. And of course, cleaning your room. You can take it how it applies to you, but I, I take it as your mind. cleaning. Oh, yeah, cleaning your mind. Organizing. Yeah, not Organizing. having so much mm -hmm. on your mind, man. Yes, and yeah. break break that thing up. Break the thing up. Guess what? You clean it up today. Clean the other stuff up tomorrow because you got time. I mean, break that thing up because I mean, hey, it's gonna be there when you sit down. I mean, why not take a break? Mm -hmm. It's about yeah. all right, you two. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we really appreciate all of our three thousand. Oh no, we had thirty-seven. I think thirty-seven hundred subscribers. So thank you guys for continuing to deal with us yeah. um, every day. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys are learning something. Also, don't I, I, like I said, um, just like and subscribe and comment as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, we have a lot of stories, yeah, a lot of things comments, to share. Yeah. LL, um, like LL cool J. Oh, yeah, we got a LL Cool J. Um, oh, Franklin off oh, of uh, Grand Theft Auto. Like, man, I said, why does Kayla like me? Why does Kayla like me? <laughs> but I take the abuse. I would take the abuse. If some LL Cool J is the real one. I love y'all, and I don't probably love, but they sound like Franklin all that. I said, Google. We had the Google. Like, who is Franklin? Who is Franklin? Franklin? I said, hey. and, I, and here I am, my crazy. So I said, he looks like you. <laughs> That's my son, like Kevin Hart. I was in the, um, the light bill. What's that, Kevin Hart? The Kevin Hart. People said, think he's like Kevin Hart. That just kind of said, throws me. Said, why can't you like me? No. Why can't you like me? Because nobody knows what you look like for real. Me? What you see now is what is is me. Why they can't look like me? Because they, they've been in the, uh, the, the spotlight longer than me. Yeah, probably so. And, oh, and, okay. and they're not wearing sunscreen. But I would take the All right, guys. of looking like somebody else. I'm going to clear my mind of. You guys saying like that dude off of uh, what it's called again? Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs>